Sean Murphy here with Compass, and today I'm gonna go over the top five public golf courses on the South Shore of Massachusetts. My name is Sean Murphy, I work with Compass, and I can help you with anything and everything that you need in regards to residential real estate. Buying, selling, investing, relocating. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel below. All my contact is below in the description as well. But now, let's get into the list. But before I do that, I need to look like I'm about to go play golf. That's better. Coming in at number five, Widow's Walk in Situate, Massachusetts. Widow's Walk was opened in 1997, has won many awards, including one of the best new golf courses in America by Golf Digest in 1999. It's a par 72 course at just over 6,300 yards from the back tees. To play there, 18 holes, walkings, $40, Get a cart, it's $59, that's the weekend prices, so weekday prices might be a little bit different, a little bit cheaper, but this is a narrow course. I've lost way too many golf balls there that I don't want to admit to losing, but it's a fantastic course, very well taken care of. In an amazing location, we got views of some of the marsh around Situate, a newly renovated restaurant, uh, as well as clubhouse. They just redid the whole thing. Great food, they have a deck outside with great views of those marshlands there off of Situate. But it's a great course, easy to get on, you can get a tea time almost any time, and I highly recommend checking it out. Coming in at number four, Southers Marsh in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Now, the story behind this course is incredible. This course was built on a 100-year-old family-owned cranberry bog. Crazy. I mean, it doesn't get any more Massachusetts and South Shore than that. So the Stern family, who owned this cranberry bog land for over a hundred years, decided to take some of the land and turn it into a full 18-hole golf course. I guess during the 90s, the cranberry industry plummeted and they needed to do something else with this land. They thought about selling it to some residential developers but instead they went with the idea, let's build out an 18 hole golf course. They already had five holes that they had built out there for family and friends, but they turned it into an amazing course. Now it's not the longest course, it's probably the shortest one on this list, but it's fun, you can get tee times there pretty easily, and the cost is incredible. It is typically ranked number one in New England for value meaning that they keep the cost down so you can get out, you can enjoy playing around the golf. So it's a par 61 course, just over 4,000 yards from the back tees. So quite a short course, but I've played here many times, donated a lot of golf balls to these cranberry bogs that are still on the course as it's still an active cranberry bog farm. But the fees, for 18 holes, you're gonna pay $38 to walk, 53 for a cart. That is again on the weekend, so a little bit cheaper during the week. And at Southers Marsh, you have a restaurant, you have a full bar that's right by the first tee box. Um, and again, it's a great family-owned golf course. And once you, you find out the story behind this and go to their website and watch the video, You'll love supporting this family, going and playing around the golf there. Highly recommend it. Coming in at number three, South Shore Country Club, Hingham, Massachusetts. Now this course, just because of its proximity to where I live, is my go-to public golf course. It was opened a long time ago, 1922, so right now they're in their 100 year celebration. It's easy to get to, it's fairly easy to get a tee time though. During the summer it can get very busy. It's a par 72 course with just over 6,000 yards from the back tees. To play 18 holes here, if you're walking, it's gonna be $70. If you're taking a cart, it's about $90. Those are again, weekend prices would be a little bit cheaper during the week. But what you don't get at other courses that you get here is a 10 lane candle pin bowling alley, as well as three indoor golf simulators that have a ton of PGA courses on them. So during the winter time, you can rent one of those bays out uh, that has a full bar, full restaurant, full wait staff, and you can play courses all over the world and get some swings in during the winter time. They also have the Greenside Grill right on site, which is a great restaurant uh, and a great bar that a lot of people go to just to go eat without even playing golf. And that's saying a lot when it comes to the quality of the food there. It's a great course, 
They take very good care of it and is one of my favorite places to go get a round of golfing. Coming in at number two is Granite Lakes in Quincy, Massachusetts. So this course's history and the story behind it is crazy. They took two old municipal landfills and former granite quarries and took the soil from the big dig up in Boston and turned it into an unbelievable 27 hole golf course. And this course has unbelievable views of the skyline of Boston and the surrounding towns, but it's got 27 holes to choose from. All three of the nine hole courses have a par 36 with just about 3,600 yards from the back tees. Now Granite Links back in 2009 was named to Golf Digest best 100 public golf courses in America, which is a huge recognition. To play 18 holes here, you're gonna pay the most out of any of these five courses. It's $165 for a full round of 18 holes with a golf cart. Now they have multiple bar options here, some outdoors, some of course inside, but they have a great restaurant right on site. And again, guys, this is something that I would highly recommend at least play one round here. The views are incredible, the course is amazing, it's very well kept, and it's one of the top public courses in the area. Now, coming in at number one is the Pine Hills Golf Course. This is down in Plymouth, Mass, and it comes in at number one because it doesn't just have one course, but it's got two. They've got two 18-hole championship courses on over 300 acres of land down in the Pine Hills. One course designed by Reese Jones, the other by Jack Nicholas. Both of these courses were developed and built within the Pine Hills Residential Development, which is an award-winning development down in Plymouth. It's built on these rolling hills and pine trees all over the place with views of the ocean. It's pretty incredible. The Jones course is a par 72, 7,175 yard course. And the Nicholas course is also a par 72 with 7,243 yards, both from the back tees. So these are two of the longer courses on this list. To play 18 holes here is about $85 on the weekends. Uh, and of course, just like the others during the weekdays, it's a little bit cheaper, but you can definitely get a tee time, you know, one to two days ahead of time. And last but not least, within the Pine Hills uh, Clubhouse, they have the East Bay Grill, which is a restaurant from downtown Plymouth, one of the, you know, go-to restaurants in downtown Plymouth that they opened up a second location here. They have a restaurant, they have an indoor bar, and it's a great place to get something to eat even if you're not going to play golf. So there you have it guys, the top five public golf courses on the South Shore of Massachusetts. Let me know if you think I missed anything on this list, but as always guys, my name is Sean Murphy. I work with Compass. If I can help you with anything, let me know. Email is down in the description here, but please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and stay tuned for more videos as I'm covering all the topics and telling you all I can about the South Shore of Massachusetts.